For a long time, I've been wanting to build a Don Fogg style forge or a post box forge as some call it. Mine is not exactly like a Don Fogg forge, but it's pretty close. But let me show you where we're at, catch you up to speed, and we'll get to building this thing. I've already made a stand to hold the forge. I just puts together some things that I have. I, I like to use things I already have. I don't like to go out and buy new stuff if I've got material, scrap that I can build from, including the pipe that I'm making the forge from. Now this is a little bigger than a traditional Don Fogg style, which is probably around 12 inches. This happens to be around 14 and a half inches, a little big, but it should work. But I'm also taking some of my design elements from a forge that J.W. Randall, Master Smith J.W. Randall built. And he takes a two inch piece of pipe, forges it down, leaves about a quarter inch gap, which makes a flare going in at an angle to the pipe and coming into the forge. That's a little different than just having a straight piece going in. So the next steps is I'm going to come in here First, I'm gonna put some braces down on the bottom, build a shelf down there and get this thing sturdied up. I've got it on wheels. And then I'm gonna come in here and put some support for the wool and the castable. I'll be casting with a bubble alumina refractory and building the roof and all of that good stuff. So I gotta put some supports in there. Not sure if my idea is gonna be the best way to do it, but that's how I'm gonna try it. Also notice I've got a four inch opening. Actually, it's a four and a quarter square on each side where I can pass material through, which is really why I want this forge. Like any forge, they have their advantages and disadvantages, but I like this style because I can do pass through and I don't have to worry about flux eating up my floor with this castable and my material will not be sitting on the floor when I'm forging. Let's get started on those support brackets. Now what I'm going to do is take some wood screws that are going to be about an inch shy of what the castable will cover. And I'm going to come in here and randomly tack them inside the forge. I'm doing this to hope that it will help support the castable while it dries and cures and prevents it from sagging and cracking. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Ideally, you'd want something like Inconel or something very high temperature resistant. Being it's buried in a good inch, I'm hoping it's gonna work. It's gonna to be tough, gotta to get in a very tight spot, but here we go. All right, while it looks like a pile of hammered cat I think it's still okay. I think it'll serve its purpose. So the next thing I gotta do is build the mold going here where I'll be pouring around this outside and through the throat of the forge. So I've already got the inner mold built. We'll set it in there and take a look at it. And then we'll start on this throat mold. This is just some thin sheet metal. This will be the actual forge chamber. And I'll have two inches of kale wool or insa wool. And I'll leave a link in the description for some of this material for you. And then about an inch of refractory. I will have supports in here to keep this from caving in, but you can see the welded supports I put in there, got about three quarters to an inch gap on those. So now what I'm gonna do is focus on getting the slot cut for the burner to come through and the uh, throats. So I gotta get molds cut for those or made for those and then cut through the chamber mold. That's what I'll be focusing on for the next few minutes.
Okay, with that very aggravating chore out of the way, what I'm gonna do next is line it with K-Wool and get ready to pour the refractory. Now I'm gonna come back and pour the floor last. I'll do the roof section and then come back and pour the floor. So I'll go ahead and get the K-Wool and the refractory prepared and get this thing poured. Oh, I don't have any refractory or K-Wool. Gotta go get it. Now the little town I'm going to is Gonzales, Louisiana. It is the jambalaya capital of the world. You ever notice that just about every town you go into, there's a world famous title to some restaurant? I mean, there's a world famous barbecue place in every town you go into, every town. Which one is it? Who comes up with this? What I don't like about this trip I gotta go to the city. I hate the city. Now my buddy, he's a little cool y'all, but he can make a mean jambalaya. Yeah. So a little bit about this K wool or insul wool has several different names. Some of it's made a little different but this is a ceramic fiber insulation. But mainly what I want to emphasize is that it is very dangerous. What I mean is breathing in any of those loose fibers, you need to be wearing some type of dust mask or respirator. And if you get this stuff in your lungs, you can damage your lungs, cause serious health problems. So make sure you wear some kind of protection. So I got to cut about 47 inches, about 16 inches tall, and get it wrapped in there and work on the next step. Fun. With all the form pieces set, what I'm gonna do is take some HVAC tape and set these throat boxes and hold my gap around there. I want the refractory to actually come in and flow out to the edge of the forge, kind of help protect it there and to cover that K wool. And this will stiffen them up a little bit. I still have to go in and drop the bracing in up and down the column of the forge, but that's pretty quick. Once I get this done, ready to pour. You can see I already got a gap there all the way around it, which is what I want. And hopefully this will seal out the refractory. I don't know how well this is going to work. Hopefully it'll offer a little protection. If it holds up, it may not even hold up after it fires up a few times. We'll see. Figured it's worth a shot. But that really stiffens up the boxes. All right, I get the rest of these on. We'll be ready to pour. Hopefully I won't have any leak issues. I tried to seal up everything, but I'm gonna be using Castellite 97 refractory. This is a bubble aluminum refractory with like a 3300 degree temperature rating. Has specific mixing requirements, water to refractory ratio. All of them are different, but you need to follow the specific one for the refractory you're using. I'm going against K-Wool here, so I'll have about an inch of refractory. So I've already measured out some, and I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing and see how this goes. That was quite a chore. What I'm gonna start on now is the gas injection port into the side of the pipe, and then we'll assemble the gas assembly. And I'll explain some of that as we go along.
All right, with the gas nozzle welded in, we're ready to go ahead and pipe it on out, our gas entry assembly here. What I've got here, a piece of 049 stainless steel tubing that I've capped off and slotted. This will slide up into a tubing fitting that I've bored out and I'll cinch it down. This will also act as a union if I want to take this out and make some adjustments. I'm using stuff, like I've said, that I've got just extra laying around my shop. I don't go out and buy nothing unless I absolutely have to. So from here, I'll have a needle valve. I'll have a gas solenoid valve that is normally closed. If I lose power, it'll close. I don't want gas flowing everywhere. Unlike a Venturi forge, if I lose power, it's not a problem. It's still burning. Yesterday, I lost power here, and I don't want gas going everywhere. So this is just a safety factor. Then I'll have a ball valve and our connection point. Also, I will not be putting a two inch gate valve here like you see a lot of folks do and rightfully so, but I'm gonna have a variable speed blower. I don't think I need it. If I can regulate the flow with the variable speed blower, I don't need to do that with a ball valve or a gate valve. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and pipe this out. I'm using a propane rated tape as I've shown and thread compound that is also gas rated. Pouring this was not fun. I did get the forms out. It's been about three days. And I've also done a lot of welding that I didn't want to bore you with, but I've got a shelf here. I've got an extension to hold up material and I've got a trap door on the back side. When I put the material in, I can push through and close when I pull it out. I've also got the roof poured and it's ready to go on. But the next thing I want to cover with you is our blower system and get it installed. Now the blower I'm going to be using is a duct blower that Vivor sent me. Didn't cost me a dime. They sent it to me to try out and I figured it'd be perfect for this forge. It is 400 CFM, 32 watt. And I'll put a link in the description with a coupon code if you'd like to try it out. It is a variable speed blower, which I have a controller mounted up here. And since it's variable speed, that's why I did not install a two inch gate valve over here. I think I've already explained that, but, and so I'll be using a funnel system that I've put together that reduces it down to two inch flexible pipe that I'll pipe over to the inlet for the forge. Now this is stuff that I got off Amazon and I'll leave a link in the description. I have built this out of sheet metal and this is a dust collection type of funnel here. It's two pieces. I have to put them together, mount it to here, get it powered up, we'll test out the blower. All right, prettied it up a little bit with some paint. Now it's time to start doing the dry running. So I'll be running this thing. There is a procedure. It's like 100 degrees an hour. I'm gonna bring it up slowly and then turn it off, fire it up again in about an hour and that sort of thing. But let's go ahead and do it the first fire and see what it looks like. First thing I'm gonna do is turn the blower on. I'm gonna set my blower 
on high speed. Right now the solenoid is open, but I got the gas off. I've got the needle valve set to about halfway, but I'm not gonna open the gas to the forge just yet. Blower's up and running. Now we'll put some gas to it. I'm just adjusting this needle valve till I get a good clean burn. Now we'll start seeing steam and all that start cooking off. Water will run out of that refractory. I just don't want to heat it up too much. Good clean blue flame. All right, so now I'm gonna shut it off. First thing I'm gonna shut off is the gas. It's running pretty good, so you can see it's steaming off. Do this several times over the next few hours before I bring it up to full heat, and then I'll run it at full heat for probably an hour. Then we'll put something in there and forge it. See how it does. So I spent about five hours last night cycling and trying to get this thing cured. Now we're gonna do some forging with it, see how it does. So I got a piece of 1084, we're gonna forge a point on it. All right, here we go. All right, likes and dislikes are pros and cons. I really don't have but one dislike, and that is the amount of time it takes to come up to heat. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is a larger forge than you need to build. About 12 inches is prime size. And when you build your insulation in, you got a small enough chamber, big enough chamber, do what you need to do. This chamber is a little bit larger. It takes about twice the amount of time to come up to heat as it does my Venturi forge or to welding heat. So I'm using less gas, but I'm using more in the long run because it takes me twice as long. So ideally smaller would be better. What I really like is the blower. Variable speed, puts out plenty of air. I can't complain. There's enough air that there's even a little back pressure. So no complaints there. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description for this blower. It's a very reasonable price and does the job. I like that it's compact. I can roll it around. Other than that, I have no complaints. I really love the Forge. I hope you got something out of this. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. I know this video is running a little long, but I appreciate you hanging around and watching. I'd like to thank Vivor for the blower, and I'd like to thank my patrons. I'd like to thank you for watching. See you on the next one.